All right, master plan part three. The, the, the story, and I think it, this holds together quite well, and we'll be actually publishing a detailed white paper with all of our assumptions and calculations, is that there is a, there is a clear path to a fully sustainable Earth uh, with abundance. In fact, you could support a civilization much bigger than Earth, than, than, than much more than the, the eight billion humans uh, could actually be uh, supported sustainably on Earth. And I'm, I'm just often shocked and surprised by how few people realize this. So we're gonna walk through the, the calculations for how to create a sustainable energy civilization. And to set the stage, today our energy economy, it's, let's be honest, it's dirty and it's wasteful. Over 80% of global energy, primary energy comes from fossil fuels and only one third of that global energy actually ends up delivering useful work or heat. This is the problem statement, but we're here to talk about the solution. So, uh, like when, if you have a gasoline car, you're, uh, you're, you're converting less than a third, uh, often maybe only 25% of the energy in the gasoline is converted into motion. The rest is turned into waste heat. That does no, doesn't do any good at all. And there's a lot of energy required even to get the oil out of the ground, to refine the oil, uh, and to transport the gasoline to the gas station. So when you, when you look at all that for a typical gasoline car is, is actually going to be using less than 20% fully considered of the uh, energy from the oil actually goes into motion. So this is a, when, when, I see people, or when we see people doing calculations for what does it take to create a sustainable energy earth, they assume that the same energy amount is required for an, elect, for an, electri an electrified civilization versus a combustion civilization. This is not true, the, because uh, most of the energy of combustion is waste heat. But the nice thing about an electrified economy, through end use efficiency and through efficiency along every step of the way, actually the total energy use halves. So this is one of the most enabling aspects of electrifying everything, uh, is that the sustainable energy economy is that much easier to accomplish. It's actually half the problem statement of the fossil fuel economy. Yeah, and we're being conservative here, so it could be better than half, but uh, we're, we're trying to have assumptions that are reasonable, not overly optimistic, in fact, slightly pessimistic. So how the master plan works? You wanna talk uh, yeah. about the, the, the thing that is needed in, at very large scale that is not currently present is a vast amount of battery energy storage. Uh, our rough calculations are that this is about 240 terawatt hours, or 240,000 gigawatt hours. So if you've got solar or wind, you've got to store the energy when the wind is not blowing, the sun is not shining. Um, and so we're assuming sort of an eight to one ratio of uh, stored energy to power. So 30 terawatt hours of power, uh, 30, 30 terawatts of power. Our capital expenditure calculation for manufacturing investment is more like uh, six trillion but we, you know, we made it higher to make it 10 trillion. And this um, is across mining, refining, you know, battery factories, recycling, vehicle factories, all the things that we're gonna talk about needing to invest in to build this sustainable energy economy. Yeah, now, if you look at the total world economy, it's just under 100 trillion. So if this was spread out, say over 10 years, it would be 1% of the global economy. Over 20 years, uh, it would be half a percent Very of doable. the global economy. So this is, uh, yeah, n not a big number relative to the global economy. Um, as Drew mentioned, you need about half as much energy with an electric economy versus a combustion economy. And f in terms of wind and solar, how much land would be used? It's less than 0.2% of the land area of Earth. The electrified economy will require less mining than the current economy does. Yes. Less, not more. Okay. Um, so this is the plan, and now we'll get into a little bit more of the details of the plan. Basically, five areas of work. Um, first, renewable power, the existing grid. Second, switch to, a, to a electric vehicles. Third, switch homes, businesses, and industry heating to heat pumps. Uh, fourth, high temp heat delivery. Uh, and storage for high temp uh, industrial and chemical processes and uh, a little bit of green hydrogen in there for chemical processes that need hydrogen. Um, and finally, sustainable, sustainably fuel planes and boats. 
these are the five areas, and we're going to go into detail on in all of them. Yeah, I mean, my personal opinion is that as we improve the energy density of batteries, you'll see all transportation uh, go fully electric, um, with the exception of rockets. So first, uh, repowering the existing grid with renewables. And this is going to be a consistent theme. You'll see our estimates for the number of terawatt hours, terawatts, and trillions of investment at the bottom of the page. You know, this is already actively occurring in front of us. 60% of the generation added to the U.S. grid was solar in 2022. And actually, on a year-on-year -year basis, solar deployment is growing 50% year-on-year uh, as of 2022. So this is a, this is a serious uh, 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 upswing. And if we continue this trend, this is going to be behind us before we even know it. Yeah. Um, second, <clears throat> switching to electric vehicles. Again, 21% uh, reduction in fossil fuel use by doing this alone. Obviously, Tesla is heavily engaged in this activity, as along with many others. Um, overall, EV production grew 59% year on year in 2022. Um, and what does this fleet look like? You know, just rough view from our perspective. Of course, we could be wrong, but you know, uh, you can see the sort of breakdown of the fleet by millions of vehicles. Um, you know, our goal is to do 20 million electric vehicles a year. And one of the reasons why EVs are so enabling is this end use efficiency point. Um, te Tesla Model 3, it's four times more efficient from the well to wheel than uh, a Toyota Corolla. And that's all about the efficiency of getting the electricity to the c into the car in a sustainable en uh, energy economy and then how efficient the car is uh, in transferring that stored uh, energy to motion on the road. Next, switching to heat pumps in homes, businesses, and industry. Um, you know, right now heat pumps meet 10% of building heating needs. Install rates growing 10% year on year. It really needs to accelerate. Heat pumps can serve you know, heat applications up to 200C in, in, in businesses and industry. And from an investment perspective, as you can see on this page, this is actually the lowest hanging fruit in terms of displacing fossil fuels. You know, they're all over this factory. They're in your house. Um, and, and all this really is is about bringing them to displace all the fossil fuel he heating in all of the homes, business, and in, in the industry that we can. And from an end use efficiency perspective, this is a three three times reduction in the total energy required to heat these buildings. Ne next, a little bit more detail on electrifying uh, high temp uh, sort of industrial chemical processes. So over 50% of industrial heat is greater than 400C. Where, you know, cement, steel, fertilizers, chemicals, plastics, metals refining all need like 1500C. So we need a solution here. U ultimately, it's purpose-built equipment that enables electrification. You know, carbon, graphite is stable up to 2800C. There's other options in the 1500C range, like silicon carbide, other, other materials. And then on the hydrogen side, we also need green hydrogen to decarbonize metals and chemical refining processes. This is things like ammonia, uh, making steel. You know, there's roughly 120 million tons of hydrogen sourced from fossil fuel today to do these things. Um, and hydrogen can also directly replace coal, which is currently used in a ton of steel production, through a process called directly reducing iron you can replace blast furnaces with uh, a hydrogen reducing uh, direct reduced iron furnace. Um, and this is the way to eliminate fossil fuels from these aspects of the economy. Um, and lastly, a small part of the pie, but a necessary part of the pie, is sustainably fueling planes and boats. Um, shipping accounts for 3% of global CO2. It's ripe for electrification. Even with lithium iron phosphate, long haul ships can be fully battery powered. So that's a, a great opportunity to. Uh, electrify. Um, energy density is a little bit harder for planes, but short haul is doable today. With some improvements, we'll get long haul underway. But even, even in the meantime, we can leverage sustainable aviation fuels produced and stored using excess renewable electricity. There's a lot of work going on in this space. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it, to, to really get uh, long range aircraft and um, long range shipping to use uh, lithium ion, uh, you need to redesign the ship and not just. Um, or the plane and the plane, uh, to take advantage of the fact that it is a new uh, source of uh, energy. It's, it's, a, it's a different architecture. Make it, as, make it mass efficient and optimized for, bat for batteries. The same, if, if that's done with aircraft, uh, I think you can get long-range aircraft uh, at around, with, with sales at around 450 watt hours per kilogram, which you can buy it right now, actually. It's expensive, but I think uh, that, that price will come down. So when we stack up all of these efforts, uh, we end up with the numbers we shared at the beginning of the presentation. 30 terawatts, 
240 terawatt hours, $10 trillion. And you're, you may be saying, like, I need some context. Is this feasible? Spoiler alert, it's entirely feasible. <laughs> um, just looking at it from a growth rate, growth rate perspective, how much do we need to grow the deployment of these technologies? We're talking about only a 3x uh, growth rate in solar and wind deployment. Um, when we look at uh, the electric vehicles, they have to grow 11x. Well, they, they grew 60% year on year last year. That growth rate is also going to close pretty, pretty darn, that, that mm -hmm. gap is going to close pretty quickly as well. And lastly, storage. Um, you know, Tesla's energy storage business has grown at 65% CAGR since 2016. The global you know, energy storage business is, is, is accelerating pace as well. I mean, all these gaps are going to close, especially as, as this momentum of the transition to sustainable energy uh, accelerates. Um, and of course, our goal on this page is 20 million EVs per year and one t uh, terawatt hour of stationary storage per year, uh, basically as, as soon as we can. And then, you know, what about this investment? How do I have a reference point on this investment? You know, Elon mentioned it's 10% of, you know, uh, one year's world GDP. Another way of thinking about it is how does it compare to what we're investing, like what we invested last year in the fossil fuel infrastructure? Um, and, and it's 60% of that investment. So actually building this sustainable energy uh, economy is, is less than extending the fossil fuel economy from a year-over-year -year investment basis. So very doable. Yeah. Um, and what about on the mineral extraction side? So this is a cartoon that sort of gives you a sense for all the ore and the like, extracted uh, minerals that are coming out of the earth every year. It's about 68 gigatons. Um, so each truck is a gigaton. What does this look like when we're in a sustainable energy economy? Looks like that. The fossil fuel extraction disappears. We replace it with the materials required to f fulfill the sustainable energy economy. It actually reduces. And then when we calculate it on a sort of, you know, element by element basis, the resources are there to support the transition. You know, this is cumulative demand to move in the sustainable energy economy direction until 2050 relative to USGS resources today. You know, th we're not breaking the resource bank for any of these materials. And then when we look at what really happens as we move forward, history teaches the more we look, the more we find. What people think happens is, oh, there's this many resources, next year there's going to be less because we're going to extract them. What actually happens is, as we uh, extract resources, we, we find more. And you can see on the right what has actually occurred with the key materials to the sustainable energy economy. Since 2000, as the sustainable energy economy has been growing and Tesla's been growing and all the industries around us have been growing, the actual resource availability has increased, not decreased. Yeah, and ultimately, you know, this resource uh, ex extraction, we, we go through this effort, we build these batteries, um, and then we recycle these batteries. So ultimately, we're, we're doing this to build this sustainable energy economy, but the maintenance amount of, of ore that we require is, is really an order of magnitude or more, less, because of recycling. Um, so in the end, a sustainable energy economy is within our reach, and we should accelerate it. Yeah, I mean, so the, 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 this is really the, the main message of today. Um, and I really want today to be not just about Tesla investors who own stock, but uh, really anyone who is an investor in Earth. Um, and the, what we're trying to convey is a message of hope and optimism. Um, and and hope, optimism that is based on, on actual physics and, and, and real calculations, not, it's not wishful thinking. Uh, Earth can and will move to a sustainable energy economy and will do so in your lifetime. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.